clubs about. Plus, I do love Fillion. Usually, he's in the chat. You here tonight, Fillion? Give me a rundown. Hit me with a synopsis. Actually, I don't know why I'm just speaking into the void here. He is not here tonight. It's unethical, the practice of, of having it. inside jokes that are so fucked up to people who don't even understand them and like, and, and basically making fun of people to their face, right? Uh, to me, that that's really what's fucked up. And, and it's more fun. It's actually more to me. That's the crime here. The crime isn't that they're Nazis and they're racist, which they might be. And, and I'm sure they are accelerationists who are people who are just basically nihilists who don't give a fuck and want to see the world burn. And like, to me, that's probably a worse thing than being anything because you really are anti-human and you're selfish. And what if I told human. you that one of the most successful NFT collections Ghosty and Harry. in the world was pulling off the biggest troll in internet history? No, not convincing people that this ugly shit is art or that it has any value. What if I told you that hidden within Bored Ape Yacht Club was a series of 4chan trolling, racist imagery, and white supremacy dog whistles. And I don't know about the, the second thing, but 4chan trolling, I believe. The founders of Board Ape Yacht Club are making a mockery of the entire world, pulling the strings of the global elite, including celebrities, athletes, actors, and influencers. This story is extremely complicated for many reasons. The problem with accepting the truth I'm about to tell you is that you have to have extensive knowledge of 4chan, internet culture, and symbolism to even wrap your head around this and understand the motive. The most important fact I'm about to tell you that you must remind yourself as we go along is that the entirety of Board Ape Yacht Club is esoteric. By design, it is only meant to be understood by a select number of people with specialized knowledge. God, and Red as you can see here, so it is considered wild. based when others with that knowledge connect the dots. Almost all of the absurdist terrible. references present in Board Ape Yacht Club are glaringly obvious to the in crowd and are invisible to anyone who isn't terminally online. I might as well be speaking a different language if I don't prime you on every aspect of this elaborate cipher. Jesus Combine Christ. this with Board Ape Yacht Club being valued at over a billion dollars and you have yourself the gold medalists of the troll olympics i had my doubts about all of this that was until i spoke with one of the top creative directors and internet artists in the world who is an expert Damien in Hurst. internet culture 4chan and trolling an artist who has worked with kanye west grimes what? and tame impala among other creative projects that you've definitely seen january 2022 a website goes live called gordongoner.com. Signed at the very bottom was the signature of Ryder Rips. Ryder Rips is eccentric and is a trendsetter in every regard. He created the Deal With It meme, Dump FM, Internet Archaeology, and V Files. What? When it comes to the. In Wait, what do you mean? He created the Deal With It meme? So does that mean he was like the first person to do like a Deal With It thing, like putting the sunglasses on? Like, I don't understand, like something like that how you have like a creator of it i feel like that's just too broad yep it's on the blockchain <laughs> uh he minted it on the blockchain the deal with it meme came from his website But can you, I guess you could probably track that, like the genesis of it. I, I, I mean, I can't prove he didn't. I just feel like that's too vague. It'd be like saying, I'm the guy who created, shit, I don't know, uh, Bad Luck Brian. He's the prime geese in the resub, Archangel and Soakage and Taint. Herpes. Man, that's fucked up. Internet, Ryder Rips is one of the most innovative artists of our generation. It's no secret that he uses internet culture and the nature of trolling to amplify his artistic messages. If there's anyone to educate others on iconography and the meaning behind art, it's Ryder Rips. And if I happen to be the founders of an NFT project manipulating the masses, into asserting value on racist imagery, I would not fuck with him. For the past six months, Ryder Rips and other researchers have collected all of the data and sources that highlight Board Ape Yacht Club's successful but depraved continued stunt. And I say continued because they still operate unchecked. 
4chan is the goal well, of the are kind of dead. Founded in 2003 by 15-year-old Christopher Moot Pool, this message board serves as a place where internet culture is mm -hmm. born, discussed, and destroyed. Users on 4chan typically post as anonymous or anon. As they argue, the identity of a user adds nothing to conversations at hand. But the collective anonymous culture of the message board has devolved into a degenerate pit of despair. Along with anonymous identities, there is virtually no moderation. As a result of this, threads on 4chan spiral into some of the weirdest and most disturbing rabbit holes on the internet. So why even post? Well, as Ryder Rips described to me, trolling is a sport on 4chan. This point alone is necessary in understanding the motive behind Board Ape Yacht Club. Throughout the internet's history, 4chan has been responsible for trolling mainstream media endlessly. One classic example of this was when 4chan yeah, tricked CNN. mainstream media into thinking the yeah. oh. okay hand symbol I was actually just talking about that. white power. The media ran with it. Yeah. As a result, actual white supremacists adopted it as their own. An internet joke that illuminated a problem with mainstream media, their willingness to post anything was taken literally, and the meaning of the joke changed forever. Another example of this. I was just fucking talking about that, and people in chat told me I was wrong. I told you it started on 4chan. I told you that shit started as a 4chan troll. I I remembered when they started that on 4chan. You guys didn't fucking believe me. Who is this 4chan you speak of? God, that'll never get old. The infamous hacker known as 4chan. The fappening. Fuck me, man. An actual classic. Thanks for some moisty boys. Hyde being the ghost of Kiev. Lastly, let's talk about the benefit of the doubt. Imagine all of what I'm about to tell you is one giant coincidence. Somewhere along the grocery list of examples of Bored Ape Yacht Club being one massive alt-right inside joke is a point at which these similarities are no longer coincidences. Let's call this the tipping point. If I bring up one instance that highlights deliberate Nazi, fascist, or alt-right messaging, you may think to yourself, I see it. But that's a reach. So I ask you. I what didn't get a raid number? notification, At but if that's real, thanks for the raid. All these examples become crystal clear in front of your eyes. For me, it was just one. First, let's talk about the apes as a whole. You don't have to look far on social media to see that many people believe the apes in Board Ape Yacht Club are inherently racist looking. Remember, they could have picked any animal, object, or thing to make an NFT project. Monkeys? Really? It seems a bit random, but we're dealing with deliberate messaging. Uh, I'm just gonna immediately disagree. I, I don't I, I don't see why that makes it like an inherently like racist decision to use monkeys for that. That's uh, that's a real big reach. I just completely disagree on that. Thanks for the resub comment. I'm sure this is probably like one of the like weakest points because a lot of people have been talking about this video and Fillion makes bangers so I'm assuming this point is just kind of like I don't know like in hindsight maybe them choosing this was racist but I don't think there's anything inherently racist about making cartoon monkeys and I, I think it's even a bit racist to assume that there's something deeper than it just being monkeys in cartoon settings but yeah with everything else that the video might present sure then the decision to use monkeys could have been like a racist one i suppose but off rip there's nothing inherently wrong with using an animal like a monkey as a cartoon for something is it tier one nick in the prime finder and hawk this is not a mistake. This is Damon Dash, the founder of Rockefeller Records with Jay-Z. And then, I don't know if that monkey thing is like, cause what's the biggest- right, I'm about to pee my pants actually, hold on, just give me one second, sorry. I'm gonna fill up my water as well. I'll be right back.
Things are used to anarchy and enraged. And the resub RF. Sleep well, super OQ, and the resub fantasy. It's the NFT. Eight, the eight. Eight. Boy, 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 don't don't boy, you think that's a little condescending to our we culture just, we in a little talk, bit? We were just talking about that. I, I, I feel like, is, is that a way a nerd is trying to get cute and laugh at us? We were just talking about that. Because either way, you should tread lightly with Monkey when it, as it relates to our culture because it's a trigger for us. Mm -hmm. And they keep doing it. So first I wasn't like, and then I was like, why is everything a gorilla or an ape or a monkey? Why it ain't a penguin or like a panda bear or something? Why is it something that's been used to, you know, disrespect us for years? So I don't know, you know? Yeah. And when language is difficult for a creator, that leaves a, a lot of room for exploitation. You know, so that means a lot of people that can understand may take advantage of those creators that don't want to understand. Do you guys realize for the last two years, they got black people to invest in monkeys and dogs while making fun of us and taking our money from us. But Doge was going to the moon. When y'all get done, go look at Board Ape Yacht Club. Don't go look at Board Ape Yacht Club. The imagery of how it's connected to Nazism. It's damn near the same imagery, but they know we won't study long enough to say, and now look how many billions of dollars they've made off of us and our culture. And then the music so industry is gonna come in. With more how does Doge fit into it? Everyone problems. lost money on Doge. All we need is us. Thanks, The Elon. reason people have made this conclusion is because of something called simianization. This refers to comparing ethnic groups to an ape or monkey. Simianization has been used throughout history to put others down in order to dehumanize them. You will see exactly how Bored Ape Yacht Club uses simianization to convey racist themes and undertones. But first, we must understand the culture in which these apes were born. In 2021, one, Board Ape Yacht Club was launched on April 30th, which is the exact day that Hitler died. The launch of Board Ape Yacht Club was actually on the 23rd with a week-long pre-sale and they sold out before the 30th. However, they made it a point to tell the New Yorker that it was the 30th. I have shown this picture to various artists. This is Board Ape Yacht Club's main logo that they use across all of their branding and social media accounts. Not too bad, right? How about now? Most of them laugh uncomfortably in sheer disbelief. The audacity to do this is mind-blowing. It does not take a genius to see that this Bored Ape Yacht Club logo is a direct copy of the Toten Kopf. The skull and bones represents death and was used by both Prussia and Nazi Germany as a military emblem representing Yeah, that one's a fair heads. criticism for I sure. I only mention Prussia because that will play out later when we examine some of the Bored Apes. Both logos also have 18 teeth. If you're unfamiliar, the alt-right white supremacists and neo-Nazis love alphanumeric code. The number 18 is a symbol of hate. More Here's specifically, Redon, it's alphanumeric Kibon, code infarct, for the bro. initials of Adolf Hitler. One being A, eight being H. One thing to note is that both logos also have a rough edge, which is uncommon in circular emblems. It's just another characteristic that demonstrates they knew what they were copying. Bordy yeah, I think that's actually a pretty convincing point, to be fair. Uh, that one, 100%. I don't think that's coincidental. I would agree with uh, Tfillion's conclusion there that that one was definitely planned. The rough edges really are kind of a pretty dead giveaway. Because if you were just, like, if you were going to go for, like, a something in a circle design, you wouldn't really give it rough edges. That wouldn't make any sense. Yeah, that one's definitely fucked. Board Ape Yacht Club was created by a company called Yuga Labs. Like everything in this project, the name has meaning. A little bit about us to start off the new year and what's coming. What's the inspiration behind the name Yuga Labs? We're nerds, and Yuga is the name of a villain in Zelda whose ability is that he can turn himself and others into 2D art. It made sense for an NFT company. When I heard this, I was confused. I've played just about every Legend of Zelda game, and I could not remember for the life of me who Yuga was. You see, Yuga is a boss in The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds, the 17th installment of the Zelda franchise available only on the Nintendo 3DS. If you're a self-proclaimed nerd or gamer, you wouldn't source your name from the most obscure Zelda game ever let alone a game for the 3DS. Everyone knows that yeah, Ocarina of that. Time, Majora's Mask, Wind Waker, 
Twilight Princess, and even Breath of the Wild are the greatest games in the franchise. I could believe Ganon Labs after the main antagonist throughout the entire series, Ganondorf, but, but does Yuga, Yuga in that I'm game do what it's claimed? There is a specific reason they pick the name Yuga. On Yuga Labs' website, they pay homage to another project called The Hash Masks. This project was made by a Swiss company known as Suomkuik Labs. Okay. This phrase, meaning to each their own, was on the gate of the Bushenwald concentration camp. This phrase was also used on the face of Prussian helmets. And Yuga Labs loved Suomkuik so much that they even took their exact terms of service. Yuga has an entirely different Wait, meaning. The phrase Kali Yuga stem. What was that? So they copy and pasted the terms? Is it like a boilerplate thing maybe? And it wasn't lifted directly from this one? I, it's too small for me to actually read it so I, I couldn't actually tell. Because a lot of terms in service are just boilerplates. I agree with a portion of his points, but not all. I, I, I don't know about this point, to be fair. If Yuga does what is claimed in the Zelda game, then it does make sense for an NFT company. But I definitely agree with his previous point on they knew what they were doing with that logo. There's really no way of arguing that it's just a coincidence when everything lines up that way. Took their exact terms of service. Swervo. Yuga has an entirely different meaning. The phrase Kali Yuga stems from Hinduism, and it refers to an age of conflict or darkness. What is the period we're in now? Because it seems like it's coming to an end. This is Kali Yuga, man. This is this is some weird shit that was predicted by the Bhagavad Gita. This is this is like this Good is what the fuck, Joe? Battle of the Gods. Yeah. Ragnarok. What Tell the me. fuck? This is what happens in cultures. Like they go through these like. These pitches, these ups and downs. The earliest mention of this phrase in internet culture was on September 11th, 2014, by an anonymous user on 4chan, in response to people being upset over Gamergate. Anon replied, I know it is dark at times, but you just gotta learn to enjoy it, man. Embrace being the bad guy. Surf the Kali Yuga. Since then, the phrase spread like wildfire among the alt-right. First, it was made into a t-shirt by Vincent Vauquelin, who founded the French Descent, an alt-right political party that operated from 2011 to 2021. Apparently, alt-right meme merch went hard, and the new design of the shirt in 2016 featured a toting cough. And in 2019, a telegram group called Kali Yuga Surfing Club was created. See anything weird here? The Kali Yuga is one of the cornerstones of traditionalist ideology that was preached by René Guénon, a French occultist and philosopher who is credited for introducing the Kali Yuga to the West. During his life, Guénon moved Holy to Egypt, shit. became Muslim, and preached traditionalism, which consisted of extreme anti-Semitism and an admiration for ancient societies which included hierarchies of class and gender. Guanan and Italian-born Nazi sympathizer Julius Avola are both revered and memed on 4chan. You'll find threads in the literature and political boards placing these two on a pedestal and recommending their works for a sense of woke pseudo-intellectualism. Often messages will be left with PBUH, which means peace be upon him a common Arabic phrase. You see, surfing the Kali Yuga manifested itself on pole. It became a repeated phrase and dog whistle among users. In fact, embracing the darkness or surfing the Kali Yuga is, is a phrase that the alt right has adopted in order to communicate a sense of collective. This might melt your brain but stay with me. It's impossible to show the masses exactly what the founders of Board Ape Yacht Club are doing without understanding Chan culture, or how 4chan acts as a think tank and hive mind. One of the worst God, aspects so of deep. Chan Jesus culture Christ. is pseudo-intellectualism. What you have is a bunch of trolls who haven't seen the light of day, that have collectively convinced themselves they are based, 
woke, and have the answers to this world. That's they usually sarcasm, in knowing specific information compared to normal people or normies. This is why it's considered esoteric. As a result of this, you have pockets of deranged people who study old texts, scriptures, and societies in order to extract archaic values and worship them. The founders of Board Ape Yacht Club are terminally online, smart assholes. I hate to admit it. The founders are clever, and I mean really fucking clever. The four founders are Gordon Goner, Emperor Tomato Ketchup, Gargamel, and No Sass. You may be wondering how are their why... wait what? How are their Twitter following so low? They invented the like poster child for NFTs. Granted, NFTs are a dead meme now, but I would have absolutely expected all of these guys to be like household names in the crypto community. I guess Gordon's the biggest of all of them, but still, this is kind of surprising. Does no one ever really look into Bored Apes or anything? Like, who made it? Hmm, I guess that's kind of weird. M imagine actually believing anything you read on 4chan. Yeah, that's where I feel like it's a little off base. Uh... No one, at least in my experience with 4chan, and I used to be, and still do go on occasionally, but used to be a lot more active there. It's usually people shitposting and sarcasm. Usually when someone actually believes their own sauce, they get made fun of. Like, I, I, it's never meant to be taken seriously. Of course, there are always going to be, like, those rogue wild animals. Like, that one guy who made a post on 4chan saying that he's going to go fight in the war in the Middle East with a sword... And then actually did go to the war in the Middle East with a sword or something like that. I don't remember the exact parameters of the story. But, like, there are always going to be those kind of people everywhere. But, on the whole, it's not like... And I guess I could be wrong. It's not like when they say they have the secrets to the universe. You know, 4chan, base, woke, super intelligent leaders. It's sarcastic. Like, the, the people there are in on the joke. A sword? Yeah, the guy had a fucking katana. And then there was also a guy who found an old hand grenade in his backyard or something. So for, he was talking about on 4chan cool things to do with it. So he used to like, he would post, be like, what should I do with this hand grenade now? Be like, put it in the toilet. And he'd take a picture of the hand grenade in the toilet. And then eventually he was like, put it in the microwave. Puts it in the microwave. And then there was a story on the news about a guy who blew up his house or microwave with a fucking grenade or something. I thought you meant a cool sword, not a katana. No, it was a katana. Yeah, that one's a classic. Like, there, there's some, like, actual wild stuff. But, again, I don't know how often it's ever serious. I guess this could be an extenuating circumstance where it was serious. I, I, I don't know, because I never saw this on the boards or anything. But, nine times out of ten, it is shitposting memes and meant to be taken not seriously. Why do they all have obscure Xbox Live gamer tags? Well, if you think this is innocent, you're not ready for this. Number one, Emperor Tomato Ketchup, Karim Adelaide, software engineer. On the surface, Emperor Tomato Ketchup sounds like a Fortnite skin. In reality, Emperor Tomato Ketchup is the name of a 1971 film that is banned across the world for containing child pornography. It's what? about children overthrowing adults and establishing their own supremacy, what in which fuck? a young boy in a fascist uniform sexually assaults a grown woman. And if you were to ask Tomato himself, he would say he got the name from a Stereo Lab album, which got its name from the film. Another example of plausible deniability. Whoa, Number two. That one's, that's pretty bad. That's, that's, a weird coincidence there. That's... Yeah, that's not good. That's not exactly like a random name you'd stumble on either. Emperor Tomato Ketchup. That's... Yeah, that's pretty indefensible. And once you were made aware that it was about child porn, I would feel like a sensible person would have immediately changed their name and been like, Holy shit, this is... Yeah, I'm out. I'll, I'll just be fucking Ninja Maniac or something. Anything but that. Gargamel. That's overreaching. Overreaching? Why would you want at all to be associated with child porn? 
to make your identity on the internet named after child porn. That's not overreaching. Even, like, again, benefit of the doubt, he did it by accident, didn't know, but now he does know and still goes by Emperor Tomato Ketchup. Like, I feel like you'd want to immediately change that. Greg Solano, MFA in writing. If anyone is familiar with the Smurfs, then the name Gargamel might ring a bell. Gargamel is the antagonist who turns sentient beings into money. He is widely known as an anti-Semitic depiction of a Jewish stereotype. And as Ryder Rips pointed out, 4chan also uses the term Gargamel to describe Jewish people. A reoccurring theme that you'll notice is that this entire umbrella of Board Ape Yacht Club trolling stems from 4chan hey. behavior. Which is based on inserting mode, enough crazy absurdity. Girl mode. She, playing. Ago, so. she was playing. Yep. Exit tier one, Gordy. Trying to run all over my all over my desk. Good. Oh, okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Be careful. She's Be careful fine. over there. She's fine. She's going to change the timestamp on the video, and then I'll be lost. Whoa. <laughs> You act so scared of her touching I her. I don't want to hurt her. She's so small. I don't want to, like, grip her too hard or something. Really? Oh, Jesus. Okay, there's no need to get a like, yo yoga she's class. She's fine. Going. <laughs> Kittens are very flexible. And they're very palliable, really. Treat everything gently. Thank you the resub Chevrolet and the fucking 20 years of again, Robert. Thank you, Robert. Like, holding her here like this. <laughs> She's fine. Okay. Really appreciate the generosity tonight, man. Thank you. <clears throat> Told you she ain't crazy, girl, man. Thanks for resub, accessory. This is Io, for those who don't know her name. What? I know you want to go play. <laughs> Let her go run around. I will. I was gonna go downstairs. So I'm going to bed. She wants your cord there. I know. She's trying to eat the cord. <laughs> Exit the bits, Mac. So, we're going to bed. Right. Yeah, she's gonna go play for another couple hours and I'm gonna go to bed. Okay, I'll come say goodnight in a little bit. Okay. Just watch if she's gonna attack your feet when you walk in the door of the bedroom. Will do. Thanks for your sub, Quinn. <laughs> Bye, I'll see you in a little bit. Thanks for the reset. I already said that. Create plausible deniability. Gargamel is smart, but he's a little sloppy. Thanks for the prime According Joe to his Reddit post history, he posted a 4chan crypto meme before Board Ape Yacht Club was even live yet, confirming that he's at least aware of the culture or uses 4chan. Greg Solano, or Gargamel, was a literature major in college and wrote his thesis paper on 2666, which is a book that takes place in Nazi Germany with a main character named after Nazi SS doctor, Hans Reiter. He even expressed on his now defunct blog that he wanted to write a fiction novel that blends real history with imaginative events, which is similar to Roberto Bolaño's 2666. This could be a stretch, but I'm reminded here of your writing backgrounds. Do you think there's any parallel between your big conceptual breakthrough to design NFTs for what interests you, not some target demo, and the idea that in writing, sometimes the best stuff comes from channeling what you really want Thanks to see, to not what some theoretical reader wants. Gargamel says, ever since the Board Ape Yacht Club, we've seen like a thousand different avatar collections come up, and a lot of them are really cool. But what we think was special, and what people could kind of read on top of ours, is that we didn't just throw 3D glasses onto apes. And we didn't have a long essay on exactly what this was, but we knew what it was. It's like Wittgenstein's let the unutterable be conveyed unutterably or Hemingway's Iceberg Theory. We what knew what this world was, was and why the apes are this way, and that somebody else might get a little tingle <laughs> on their neck looking at it, thinking, yeah, this is kind of different. This isn't just random. In this interview, Gargamel literally just confirmed 
that Bored Ape Yacht Club is his medium for creative writing. First, the quote is cryptic, but it makes a lot of sense given the context of this project. Let the unutterable be conveyed unutterably. Dog whistles, hidden meanings, fiction writing, Nah, man, they're just apes with 3D glasses. You don't understand crypto. In this statement, Gargamel quotes Ludwig Wittgenstein, an Austrian Jewish philosopher believed to have been the boy who went to school with Adolf Hitler from 1903 to 1904. According to writer Kimberly Cornish in The Jew of Linz, she alleges that Hitler alludes to a Jewish boy who is believed to be Wittgenstein in Mein Kampf. Wittgenstein's entire Holy body shit, of work Jesus consists Christ. of cipher, cryptology, and solving puzzles. Similar to how Bored Ape Yacht Club is one massive puzzle designed to be cracked for the sole purpose of stroking their twisted fanfiction writing boner. Second, he states Hemingway's Iceberg Theory, Please, which describes exactly so what they're doing. Iceberg Theory itself is also a 4chan meme. Greg Solano also has written a book titled The Cinematic Art of World of Warcraft. To say he isn't a sucker for fantasy would be a flat out lie. We know that Gargamel is a creative fantasy writer. We know that he wrote his thesis paper on a Nazi story. And we know that he wanted to create something similar, blending real and fake events. He literally quoted Ludwig Wittgenstein and Iceberg Theory, confirmed that there is hidden meaning, and that everything is deliberate in Bored Ape Yacht Club. Prior to Bored Ape Yacht Club, Greg Solano even stated he wanted to create a Lovecraftian themed NFT project. And if you know anything about Lovecraft, he was a notorious white supremacist, often weaving his prejudices as the basis for his stories. The frustration that Ryder Rips and others have felt- But to be fair, a lot of people can, and there have been a lot of people that have made Lovecraftian inspired inspired work without ever like appreciating Lovecraft or like anything like that. Undeniably Lovecraft's role in like horror elements and creatures was huge. So a lot of things spin off of it without ever like being an applause of the guy, Lovecraft. So it really could still just be a case of liking the horror creatures that came from it and the impact that it had on creature design. I didn't know he was wow. Really? I thought most people knew that Lovecraft was actually a massive racist. His dog was literally named the N-word, if I remember correctly. It was fucked. Oh, it was his cat. His cat. I, I knew it was something like that. Cat. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's pretty fucked up. Myself included, with the public's perception of this criticism is immense. You can't begin turpits. to educate people on this when they're too ignorant to realize that they're being played. Bored Ape Yacht Club, in a way, is a social experiment in making fun of people who are easily influenced. Crypto bros and everyone who sucks off technocrats included. It is a commentary on the number going up forever, or the wag me crowd, which lives by the slogan, we're all going to make it. This is a very real I've sentiment never heard that. shared by thousands of people on the internet, which the founders of this project have profited off of immensely. All it took was celebrity worship, proper funding, fueled by a dystopian political agenda to get fascist propaganda on the world stage. Let me be clear, I'm not saying buzzwords just to say them. This is what's happening. Three, Gordon Goner or Wiley Arano also a creative writer. The third founder of Bored Ape Yacht Club goes by Gordon Goner, the same name Ryder used for the website piecing this all together. This was done for SEO purposes, so that when you type in Gordon Goner on Google, Ryder's website pops up first. In an interview with Wiley from 2014, he stated, the only book that I don't like is Mein Kampf, but I haven't read it. When asked innocently about books, he resorted to making Hitler jokes? Yeah, there's probably nothing to see here, right? This is just more proof that Wiley's attempt at edgy humor dates back to 2014. What In an interview fuck? with Rolling Stone, Gordon Goner stated he chose the name because it sounded like Joey Ramone, lead singer of the Ramones. It should be known that Bored Ape Yacht Club's connection to the Rolling Stone is not random. It's through Neil Strauss, author of The Game, who is apparently writing about the subculture of Bored Ape Yacht Club. Gordon Goner is a full phrase anagram for Drongo 
Drongo Negro. Drongo is Australian slang for stupid, and Negro means black. Drongo is also tossed around on 4chan and Reddit. It's not simply a random word. It is also conveniently a species of black bird. Another example of a hyper-specific double-meaning term or phrase in Bored Ape Yacht Club. There's not much else known about Wiley Arano, aka Gordon Goner, besides loose leads that allege he's a crypto-fascist. And his dad is literally Don Arano, portrayed by John Travolta in Speed Kills. Both Gargamel Wait, and what? Gordon Goner are writers and creatives, according to the CEO of Yuga Labs, Nicole Muniz. Can you take me back to the origin story of Bored Ape Yacht Club? It was almost exactly a year ago. Garga, who's one of the founders, texted Gordon um, with, hey, let's make a NFT. So Garda and, uh, Garga and Gordon were both really into crypto. They were really active in the community. But Reminds your subjune bug. They are writers. Um, that's actually their background. Um, they are storytellers, they're creatives, and so, like, crypto was this thing that, like, they were fascinated by, and they, like, loved, but they were never able to actively participate in. Right. In there was a barrier to entry, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly, because it was technical. Yeah. And they're not technical, they're, they're writers, they're creatives, they're storytellers, like, that's, that's what they do. So it's, it's entirely uh, critical that you understand the context of anything. So the issue with Board Ape Yacht Club is that they're not providing any context. The context that they provided is that literally it's meaningless. They, they said that these are just apes in a swamp who like drawing penises on a penis wall. That's well, isn't that running counter to what he actually said? Because in that interview, he said, where was it? I don't remember which one it was. I don't know if it was the child porn named guy or the other guy, but one of them said that it isn't random or something. What, where the fuck was it? Oh, here. Yeah. And then somebody else might get a little tingle on their neck looking at it thinking, yeah, this is kind of different. This isn't just random. So this guy said that it isn't just random. He's literally saying the opposite, that it's not just apes with 3D glasses unutterable be conveyed unutterably kind of different isn't just random yeah they're lying well no th so this this was used as a piece to conf to to say that there is more to it than just random you know apes in 3d glasses and shit that there is a deeper meaning to it this interview is used in the context of the video to say that there is deeper meaning than just random ape stuff. And he's not saying what it is, which is why it's left to interpretation, where this now being here confirms that there is something more to it, which is why all of these things like the iconography the, and like the racist stuff would make sense because they're not doing it like accidentally. They have a purpose for it. But then this interview here, the guy is saying... Uh, that it is random, that they're claiming it's random, even though they're not. Thanks to the tier one plane, the resub gunner. Hey, gunner, a good video, by the way, man. Another banger. Thanks to the prime armier. You? So it's, it's entirely uh, critical that you understand the context of anything. So the issue with Board Ape Yacht Club is that they're not providing any context. The context that they provided is that literally it's meaningless. They, they said that these are just apes in a swamp who like drawing penises on a penis wall. That's the official story of Board Ape Yacht Club from the mouth of Nicole, the CEO. Like, that's it. Like, end. <laughs> Done. Like, there's nothing There's a pretty cool story. Nothing else. They called me. Just drawing like, penises on a wall. Hey, we're going to do this thing. And like, you know, just explaining the idea. And I kind of giggled and was like, oh, yeah, I mean. But people Why'd you turn on slow penises. mode? Was that an accident? And that was it. Like, I was just like, I didn't think anything of it. We hung up. But like, the stupid thing that I said that I never would have thought about right. transformed into, well, what if they do draw pen penises? Yeah. And where do people draw penises? And, you know, it turned into, well, it's a bathroom. Right. You know, it's a toilet stall. 
and it's a dive bar and but it's not a dive bar it's a yacht club that's a dive bar but it's in a swamp and it's going to be this like future vision of Miami and you know it's all of these like bored apes um, this is a whole bunch of nothing right here that she's they saying. just created this like story and this world. Let's play a game of I Spy. What the fuck are you the talking about? The cover of this Rolling Stone art is a direct reference to Hieronymus Bosch, who painted pictures like these in order to hide things in them. Spot the racist dog whistle. Ape hands are a racist dog whistle, alluding to the practice of Belgian King Leopold II cutting off Congolese hands for punishment in not working hard enough to produce rubber. The Congolese then started cutting off fellow African hands as it became a currency valuable to the Belgians in itself. Never underestimate the ability for Bored Ape Yacht Club founders to be this demented. Let's try this again. This is footage of the Bored Ape Yacht Club video game. See There's anything a game? interesting? What's up with these bananas? Why is the bushel of bananas conveniently shaped like a swastika? For SAS, Zayshan Ali, Wait, software what, what engineer. Well, I, I didn't the notice ability that. For Bored Ape Yacht Club founders to be this demented. Let's try this again. This is footage of the Bored Ape Yacht Club video game. See anything interesting? That doesn't really look like a swastika to me. That looks like barnacles in Bikini Bottom. Like, it looks like the sky. I, 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 yeah, that one, not so much there. It's like shurikens. What's up with these bananas? Why is the bushel of bananas conveniently shaped like a swastika? For SAS, Zayshan Ali, software engineer. The fourth founder of Bored Ape Yacht Club goes by SAS, and going off the theme of hidden meanings throughout their entire project, this is also deliberate. SA is the abbreviation for Sturmetablung, and SS for the Schutzstaffel. SAS, or SASS, is the combination of the two primary Nazi military divisions. There are two possibilities that explain the behavior of the founders. Number one is easy, they are neo-Nazis. Number two is a bit more complex, and Ryder believes we need new terms to describe what's happening. In other words, this is an internet troll's wet dream, post-ironic racism on the world stage. This means that this is a meme, but it doesn't look like one because there's nothing to indicate otherwise. This can also be described as Poe's Law. It's impossible to know if someone is joking unless they add an LOL at the end of a message to indicate how it's supposed to be perceived. In other words, Bored Ape Yacht Club founders are layering on the irony of troll behavior to the point where it's just doomed. The best way I can describe it is beating a dead horse until the horse comes alive again and then dies again from the irony. February 4th, 2022, Katie Natopoulos, a writer at BuzzFeed, wrote an article covering the identities of the founders of Bored Ape Yacht Club. And where exactly do you think she got her information from? Ryder rips. However, she stated, Solano and Arano don't appear to have any particular red flags, which, as we know, is a flat-out lie. Pressured by Guy Oseri, Kate Natopoulos ran a softball story in an effort to save face. The more degenerative side of 4chan, including white nationalists, enjoy participating mm. in the cult of Kek, a metaphorical, fictitious religion that worships Pepe the Frog. Think of it as a tribe I haven't on heard 4chan that in who considers so long. everyone else not in the know Holy as normies. Shit. They wave the Kekistan flag, which is an exact ripoff of Prussia and Nazi Germany's war mocked symbol. Their mission? troll the liberals at all costs through meme warfare. By having shared symbolism and jokes, it is a way to communicate or dog whistle to other members that they, quote, embrace the principles of chaos and destruction that are central to alt-right thinking. The term Kek originated from World of Warcraft. When a horde player types LOL to an alliance, LOL is then translated into gibberish spelling out Kek. This is I didn't know the that. two opposing factions in the game can't communicate with each other unless they are on the same faction. It just so happens that Kek is an Egyptian god that looks like a human with a frog head. Hence, Pepe. And guess what Kek was the god of? Darkness and chaos. Sound familiar? Surfing the Kali Yuga was- Whoa, whoa, what?
Uh, I never heard those connections. That That's a lot to take in. But the thing is, Pepe the Frog as a meme has existed long before Keck. Right? If I remember correctly, Pepe the Frog started in like, fuck... 2011? 2012, maybe? As a meme? Maybe even before then. So that would absolutely predate Keck. Oh, Keck was 2005. Oh, right. Yeah, no. I guess. What came first, the Keck or the Frog? Thanks to the resub, Yenre and Aussie. Keck is from OG Warcraft. Yeah, but it just, I don't, I don't remember Keck getting big until, like, the last decade. But I remember Pepe the Frog even when I was, like, fuck, like, 13 or 14. Keck was always used in WoW. I guess that's why, since I didn't play WoW, I played City of Heroes and RuneScape, so I never got Keck. So I only really heard of it once I got, like, really online. Okay. Pepe was born 2005, but it didn't become a meme until 2008. Pepe got attached to it much later. Okay, so I mean, I guess this timeline could make sense. Taking Pepe to Keck based on the god of darkness and chaos. I think that's a bit of a reach. I think even if Keck didn't exist, Pepe would have still been a meme regardless. But I guess that's a chicken and egg, a chicken and egg situation. was not the only surfer innuendo that the alt-right adopted as lingo. In fact, they also used the word cowabunga to signify their alt-right beliefs to fellow members of the alt-right. It just so happens that one of Bored Ape's founder's wife had this exact lingo in her bio, which has now been deleted. And in September 2021, Bored Ape Yacht Club challenged the internet with a series of puzzles. Whoever cracked the secret codes would receive a Bored Ape Kennel Club NFT, a Bored Ape NFT, a Mutant Serum NFT, and 10 Ethereum. At the time, Jesus the value Christ. of these prizes added up to hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah, this goddamn. puzzle will demonstrate just how far the creators of Bored Ape Yacht Club are willing to go in order to play out their racist fantasy. This information is taken directly from this user's post on Medium. This whole puzzle started with a single stealthy tweet somebody left a strange note at the bar the image contains a message come find me below with the cipher text of semicolon u8jj6 this is a keyboard cipher where if you look at the keys below each letter on a keyboard you see that it spells slash jimmy entering this after boardapeyachtclub.com will Whoa. take you to a new page and you are able to load Whoa. a puzzle game jimmy the monkey is back on his bullshit again in the clubhouse the game is a 2d screen where you can click on rooms and interact with various objects most of the rooms contained a puzzle the boat room contains a single interactable object in the room which is a wall of dancing men if you know a bit about ciphers, it's fairly quick to recognize that this is a Dancing Man cipher. The Dancing Man cipher is from Sherlock all. Holmes. Decoding the cipher reveals the following message. This isn't a puzzle clue. Suck on a banana, bozo. Love, Jimmy. This seemed to be a troll as it was not used in the final solution. The party room has two interactable objects in it. The first object is a dog collar with the numbers 0010 on it. This is just the ID number for the exact NFT that you would win if you were to crack the puzzle. The second object is a party poster containing song lyrics. I thought the it was puzzle binary gets a code or something. Song lyrics sorted in alphabetical order by word with one of the words being replaced by the word monkey. Solving this puzzle involves Angry taking each lyric word bank, identifying the song, and figuring out which part of the song the lyrics are referencing. You sort each word in that set of the lyrics in ABC order and figure out what word has been replaced with monkey. This results in the following troll message. 
wasted your time on this one, stupid apes. Entering the pool area presents you with two puzzles, one located Fuck. on the inflatable duck in the pool and the other on a drink menu located next to the bar. This puzzle presents a list of duck-themed clues and their answer length. Going through and solving all of the clues results in the list below. With this answer set, reading the first letter of each answer gives the phrase cocktails are shaken, which is a clue for the puzzle located next to the bar. Using the hint from the previous puzzle, we now know that this menu list is an anagram of cocktails. In oh addition, the text at the bottom of the menu indicates what something extra was added to the drinks, hinting to there likely being an extra letter not used in the cocktail anagram. With there being 26 menu items, it seemed highly likely the extra letters or the cocktails used every letter A to Z for ordering when done. It is quickly realized all the cocktails start with a unique letter A to Z that, when put in order, Order, and reading the extra letters gives orange liqueur used in spritz. Final answer, Aperol. Upon entering the kitchen, a sheet can be found lying next to the sink. This puzzle provides instructions on what to do. Begin by identifying the dishes that are clued on the left and filling out the blanks on the right. These puzzles the extracted are nuts. letters, highlighted yellow on the sheet, spell the phrase Gibraltar's Barbary, which is referencing a specific monkey that lives on Gibraltar, the Barbary macaque. Final answer, Makake. In the library, you can start by clicking on the bust on the top of the shelf, which contains a puzzle scroll. This puzzle is a Mad Gap style puzzle as hinted by the title, Bus Don Dush Elf, which, when read aloud, sounds like bust on a shelf. You can make four Mad Gab style phrases using one word from each column on the scroll. The output of each Mad Gab is its own clue to a word. This final output is yet again a Mad Gab where ooze six sight furs can what be read as fuck? ooze six ciphers, a hint for the bookshelf puzzle. When you click on the bookshelf next to the fireplace, it Holy shows you shit. a large version of the bookshelf. This bookshelf contains many different patterns throughout. As you start to group the patterns together, you will discover there are six separate puzzles using six different ciphers, as hinted in the previous puzzle contained in the shelf items. The monkey hands. There are six hands throughout the shelves using American Sign Language to spell weapon. Naval flags. There are six international maritime signal flags throughout the shelves that spell Nassau. Five-bit binary. There are six groups of books colored orange and green. These books are five-bit binary, which provides 10010, 0010, 0010, 0010, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 0011, 
roll to Joker results in poker, the actual solution to this puzzle line. Here is the rest. Taking the first letter uh -huh. of each solution, you get the following phrase. Drooper's apartment pal. Drooper is a character from the Banana Splits, and his apartment pal is Bingo. Bingo is an ape, so we can confidently determine the answer is Bingo. The attic is one of the more difficult puzzles, and before we dive into it, we first have to talk about the skeleton in the crawl space. The skeleton oh, in my the God, this is so is nuts. three-letter phrases and some numbers, with the flavor text of NTH plus EAT. We know that we're trying to combine the phrases to spell words with the numbers most likely being the length of each. Okay, hold on. A quick respite here, a little halftime show. Uh, so that uh, Gwynon thing... That's big. Uh, I was fully still on, like, the skeptical could-be-coincidence kind of thing, except for, of course, the, the logo. That one was absolutely deliberate. Now I'm much more on the side of, yeah, they absolutely do know what they're doing. Uh, coincidences don't seem to be a thing that they believe in. This puzzle, this whole little puzzle thing here, is absolutely wild. I haven't even heard of half of these ciphers, and I'm, I'm a big fan of... Of looking into things like the old like Lorenz machine and shit like that. Because I always find that kind of shit fascinating. And even I haven't heard of like the majority of these kind of puzzles. Like this is a crazy level. Holy shit. And the fact that it does tie back into Rene Guanon in their own puzzle, their official one. I think that's a massive, massive red flag that yeah, maybe this is all a giant troll uh, racist thing. Like, like the... Uh, creators here dog whistling some wild racist shit as like a meme and bored ape being a giant fucking meme yeah I, I no longer feel like it's a reach anymore this is by far the most convincing portion of this argument uh, other things I do and even still do think is a bit of a stretch but this is undeniable and anything that I was writing off as a coincidence now seems less likely to be a coincidence as a result of seeing how thorough they are when it comes to like hiding image or hiding words, hiding anything inside of simple things. It's very fucking deep. Like, holy shit. That is, that is nuts. Why? They're just puzzles? Well, yeah, but one of the puzzle's answers was uh, the Rene Guénon, which was referenced earlier by one of the founders, uh, and I don't remember exactly what Guénon was, but it tied into something racist Nazi-related. Which, again, I don't think is a coincidence anymore. Because this is really fucking thorough. Guénon is also a monkey, so it could just be the monkey. Again, that's writing it off as a coincidence, which I just don't think they do. Plus, in that interview, he did even say, like, it isn't random, there is deeper meaning to it. Let the unutterable be conveyed unutterably, and all of that. Thanks to the resub, Caliborn, Giga, and Cilantro, and God Slam. And we haven't even finished what the next one's going to be. Jesus, hold on. I'll be right back, though. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go say goodnight to Tiana real quick. This shit is fucking wild. Y'all getting trolled so hard? Well, that's the that's the whole meaning of the video. That board apes were meant as a troll, like a meme troll. I'll be right back though. I'm back. Thanks to the resub Giggity, and the resub Dillis and Model, and the Rondo, and the Prime Tommy, and the resub Paquito. word. There's really no approach other than maybe looking up words that start with or words that end with, but the best place to start was realizing that NTH and EAT were clued as being connected and could spell N the 
at. After that, it is mixing and matching until you get something good out. The output you get is Anastasia Steel really loves the hexes used in the attic. This is a reference to Anastasia Steel from Fifty Shades of Grey, in which the is fuck? referencing that the hex color codes in the attic are gray codes. This is basically a second hint for bought it, which you can see in the attic section below. The attic starts with an image with some pixels and flavor text about having to feel your way around in the dark. This is a reference for being blind and hinting towards the pixels being braille. The phrase you get out of using colored pixels as braille dots, beginners always unlock dim old tones. If you take the first letter uh, of each one. Okay, again. So this had to be an entire community coming together to solve these, right? There's no way this was just like one or two people, like a little team. This had to be an entire community doing this, yeah? So then how the fuck... When you work together on something like this, who gets the prize? Batman solved it. Bro, Batman's brain would fucking melt going through all these ciphers. Exit tier one. Lychee in the resub tie. Hard to explain, Kurafu. That's a good point filtered, I suppose. word as hinted by the word beginners, you get bought it, which is a type of cipher. This is the one puzzle you can right click and export the image, and it just so happens to be SVG. So we can extract the hex color codes accurately for the next step as hinted by the skeleton puzzle. <laughs> Extracting all of the binary codes out and removing the lead zero, you Fucking get the following. Fascinating. Using bought it encoding on the binary, you get the following. The only interesting thing we get is Calamar, which is another type of cipher. This suggests that our extra is valid, but the rest of it is cipher text. We can then use the string How with a Calamar ciphers? transposition solver, but without a key, it was just a bunch of guessing words as a key. Solvers of this puzzle got stuck here for a while until it was noticed that attempting some auto solves on the grid, assuming six columns instead of eight, resulted in the final eight letters looking like a scrambled version of Visionaire. Given the first set of data gave us Calamar, and having it almost end with Visionaire now, another type of cipher, was too likely to be a coincidence. Putting some effort in manually, with a six column assumption, you're able to get the following. Using column air key of 412563 or 214563 gives an output that spells visionaire at the end, giving us the following possible strings. Cutting visionaire off the end and taking the remaining letters, we try to decrypt the cipher using visionaire and testing keywords relating to bored apes and the puzzle. Eventually, they landed on the following. Australopithecus. At this point, it's time to solve the final what solution. What the fuck taking is the that? answer from each puzzles and sort them in ABC, we get the following words. Aperol, Australopithecus, Bingo, Guanan, Makake. If we examine the answers, we can extract even more information about what they mean. Aperol is an orange liqueur that only got Ollie popular after that. World War II. This answer is different than all the slick. others, considering it is a drink that is meant to be ingested. Going off that theme, perhaps this is a metaphor for taking the red pill, as it sometimes appears red in color. Aperol also just has the word ape in it. Australopithecus. Of all the different possible answers they could have chosen, they landed on Australopithecus. Here's a little anthropology for you. In 1931, Ludwig Kohl Larsen joined the Nazi party and later undertook an expedition to German East Africa in search for a primitive man. In 1938 to 1939, he discovered Australopithecus afarensis at Letoli without realizing the importance of his find. Ludwig attempted to prove that all people have a common origin, but that African people remained in the state of primitive men, while the Aryan race had developed. Such scholarship was at odds with most anthropological concerns of the day in Africa. He then later lost his position as professor in the course of the denazification after the war. Cole Larson is not highly regarded amongst contemporary East Africanists. Bingo. Bingo the Gorilla is a major Holy yet final shit. antagonist in the 2019 directed video horror comedy film The Banana Splits Movie. Bingo and his friends are animatronics created by Carl to entertain children as the banana splits. However, after the show is cancelled, Bingo and his friends start a killer spree. You want to know something even creepier? Bingo only has three lines in the movie. I wonder how the show's gonna end. Time's almost up. Time's almost up. Bingo's last and most famous words. The only words Bingo ever says sounds just like accelerationism. Oh, that's a bingo. <laughs>
Is that the way you say it? That's a bingo. You just say bingo. Bingo! How fun! <laughs> Guanan has double entendre. He's the father of traditionalism, bringing the Kaliuga to the west, and Guanan is also a species of monkey. Makake also has double entendre. Makake is a racial slur and a type of monkey. By definition, there is a clear distinction of what type of monkey both Guanan and Makakes are. They are part of the old world classification of monkeys. In 2006, a Virginia senator was called out for using this slur. With close ties to Virginia, the founders of Board Ape Yacht Club would definitely be aware of this political disaster. You too have gotten in trouble with words that you've uttered. Let me bring you back to August 11th. You were at a campaign stop and a young man who was videotaping it for the web campaign was there also. Let's watch. This fellow here over here with the, the yellow shirt, Makaka, or whatever his name is, he's with my opponent. And let's give a welcome to Makaka here. Welcome to America and the real world of Virginia. And here's the young man, S.R. Siddharth. He's a resident of Virginia, an American citizen. Jesus Christ. A student at Fairfax High School, now goes to the University of Virginia. Critics say that Makaka is a racist slur and that you used it because he was dark skinned. What did you specifically mean when you said, Welcome to America and the real Virginia? Why did you use those words toward a dark skinned American? Tim, I made a mistake. I said things thoughtlessly. I've apologized for it as well I should. But there was no racial or ethnic intent to slur anyone. If I had any idea that that, that word, and to some people in some parts of the world, world was an insult, I would never do it because it's contrary to what I believe well, where did who it I come am. from? It must have been in oh, your just consciousness. Made up. It's just made, made up. up. Made up words. My theory what? is that the primate answers of what? this puzzle are a direct reference to the founders of the project, and Aperol could be seen as the red pill. The Boogaloo boys were born on the weapon board of 4 known as K. Think of them as power- Alright, so I guess I have a question stemming back to this then. The, the Gwynon, that one's a massive red flag. Uh, everything else having a double meaning, also a bit of a red flag. Seems like none of them are just, like, innocent answers to their game. This right here, though, this one has, like, seemingly the most racist history behind it. I'm curious, does this still get used anywhere, or is it only that one guy who, like, had this word? Because if it's only that Ludwig Kohl, whatever, uh, the Nazi uh, scientist or Nazi researcher or whatever, then that's that's not a coincidence there'd, there'd be no way that's a coincidence how do you spell it it is still used it's a legit term okay but it was just found by that guy because i've never heard this why am i caps locked okay so it, he discovered it but the name is still used. Gotcha. Okay. I didn't know if that was just, like, something he, like, drummed up after discovering it. And, like, they, they, the name didn't stick. It was changed or something. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Project, and Aperol could be seen as the red pill. The Boogaloo boys were born on the weapon board of 4chan known as K. Think of them as paramilitary incels or Chan LARPers. They can be classified by their Hawaiian shirts and absurdist meme styles Gino. to make anyone who calls them out look beat. insane. It can be a very effective tactic when trolling. This Board Ape Yacht Club shirt is an exact Boogaloo boy Hawaiian shirt used to LARP by 4chan users. This is Ape 1488. The Number 14 is a neo-Nazi dog whistle. It is a direct reference to the white supremacist slogan known as the 14 words. We must secure the existence of our people and future for white children. The slogan was coined by David Lane, a member of the white supremacist terrorist group known as The Order. The number 88 is white supremacist alpha numerical code for HH, which stands for Hail Hitler. 1488, which is also included in the ADL database or the Anti-Defamation League, is a combination of these two hate symbols. But uh, the fact is, guys, I've been on the internet 20 
20 years. I know pretty much about every single different slur that's in the English language and a few in other languages as well. So not only do I understand all the slurs, I also understand the euphemisms like 1488. Here is where it gets really dark. What do you see on this ape? No, not the bloodshot eyes. This ape is wearing a prison outfit with the numbers 0198. 07. If we take out the zeros, a practice in cryptography called null padding, we are left with 1987, which we can deduce is a year. You see, 1987 is a reference to the year that Rudolf Hess, a Nazi hero, died in the Spandau prison in West Berlin as a result of his conviction during the Nuremberg trials. The it was fuck? destroyed the same year to prevent it from becoming a neo-Nazi shrine. Not everyone who has a board ape is aware of the inherent racism. Let me point your attention to the sales activity tab. If someone like that's just not a coincidence though like that's that's just simply not there's no way for variations of that's that is there's just no fucking shot especially after given the history of the board ape team that put together that giant contest full of ciphers there's no way that one's just straight up not a coincidence in any capacity the the prison outfit this tying back to the year that the the guy was killed or died in the prison or whatever like None of that. This, that's, there's no shot that's a coincidence. Like, even if you don't believe any of the other ones, like, this one is just straight up not a coincidence. I am starting to believe in the, the argument Fillion's making that Bored Apes were started as, like, a giant meme troll with racist shit, uh, racist undertones hidden throughout it. The last couple of points have been extremely strong, starting with their uh, the official board ape uh, contest here. Thanks to the resub Jarvis in the prime midnight resub pterodactyl. So the creators of board apes are all part of a racist Nazi conspiracy. No, see, people are getting so twisted in what the actual argument Fillion's making is. The argument he's making is the people that started Bored Apes started it as a meme troll and hid, like, common racist, like, jokes and shit inside of it. He's not saying that they're, uh, like, a giant racist conspiracy or trying to, like, start some kind of racist movement or anything or everyone that owns a Bored Ape is racist. He's claiming that the people that started it have a lot of history on 4chan, which he has proven in at least one instance, and that they are deliberately hiding these Nazi racist, like, uh, Easter eggs throughout it and these undertones. That's what he's saying. Like, it's not random, it's not coincidence, and there are these provable patterns as well as provable connections to racist shit. Nazi shrine. Not everyone who has a board ape is aware of the inherent racism. Let me point your attention to the sales activity tab. If someone is selling an ape, they set the price. Interestingly enough, there is a pattern of selling apes for variations of 88 Ethereum, ending prices in 0.88 or 0.14. This is a cut and dry example of esoteric racism. Ape 6969 features the same prison jumpsuit and a Prussian helmet with a shit eating grin. This is a troll hidden in plain sight designed to mock everyone who looks at it. The odds of Ape 6969, which is a troll in itself, having both the prison jumpsuit and a Prussian helmet is statistically near impossible. Apes in the Bored Ape Yacht Club project are adorned with various characteristics. This can include clothing, accessories, eyes, faces, anything you see on these apes can be randomly generated to produce the final product that we see as an ape. By design, some of these characteristics are more rare than others, which means more desirable, which results in a higher price. Some of these characteristics are harmless, but there is a definite through line with one characteristic in particular, headwear. The Prussian helmet is known as a pickelob, which is a reference to the German Empire from 1871 to 1919. The Vietnam era helmet features an ace of spades card attached to the helmet, which was a custom American soldiers started in World War II, but continued in Vietnam. In Vietnam, however, American soldiers would leave an ace of spades on dead Vietnamese soldiers. The card in the board ape helmet 
has a letter J on it, which would indicate a jack of spades, not an ace. The founders of this project are not sloppy writers and wouldn't get history wrong if it meant they could include yet another racist reference. Maybe this explains it. Based on a 1938 decree in Nazi Germany, every Jew in Germany had to carry an identification card marked with J for Jewish at all times. The sushi chef headband is a Japanese headband known as a hachimaki. Hachimaki can have different Japanese characters on them to mean different things. There are six variations that are the most popular and commonly used. Bored Ape Yacht Club went with kamikaze to indicate imperial Japan suicide pilots. A sushi chef would never wear this headband. The safari helmet is a British or European pith hat used by the British Empire in colonizing Africa. And Belgium in the Congo, led by King Leopold II, who, as you know, cut off Congolese hands. The kami hat is known as a yushanka, and with the sickle and hammer, it represents the Soviet Union or the USSR. Worn during World War II while Russians were commanded by tyrannical Yuma. leader Joseph Stalin. The fez is a potential reference to the of an empire, no, 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 but there's I mean, also you know, such thing as a Nazi more. fez. With all of these helmets and headwear, one can see a clear picture of Chan culture's fetishization of power and dominion of those they deem weaker. October 2021, music manager Guy Oseri, founder of management firm Maverick, who represents Madonna and U2, acquired representation of Board Ape Yacht Club. This would include securing book deals, music, television, video games, and even movie integrations. This was a power play Man, for I can't Board imagine Ape Yacht Club a worse because idea. it legitimized funding Jesus and star Christ. power behind the project. With the connections of Guy Oseri, Board Ape Yacht Club, now had a way to control the media messaging around their project. The project obviously has so much hype and so much support. Thanks, There's Tristan. also been criticism. Some people connected some of the in images to racist tropes. Um, I'd love to give you the opportunity to respond to that criticism. It's apes, because aping in is very much a nod to this community. To crypto enthusiasts to people who aped in early. So the, the story is about them. One of the founders is Jewish. One is Turkish. One is Pakistani. One is Cuban. Guy Oseri, who's one of the partners that came in later last year, is Israeli. I myself am Cuban, and I'm actually first generation American. The idea that we're neo Nazis or. Oh, so this must have actually been a big thing. Offensive. It's hurtful. It's totally untrue. That's really personal to you, that criticism. The idea that you can't be racist, or even ironically racist, because you're ethnic, is the saddest excuse I've ever heard. And this interview is bought by Guy Oseri. Here he is pictured with the founder of D3. And this woman looks oddly familiar. Guy Oseri is even referred to as the fifth ape, a reference to the fifth beetle. When Ryder launched GordonGoner.com, Guy Oseri went off the deep end. Ryder Rips described to me a two hour phone call consisting of Guy Oseri screaming at him to stop digging into the project. After Ryder explained the symbolism to Oseri, he replied, with who am I to judge what art is? And remember that Rolling Stone interview I mentioned? Gordon Goner stated, are we the Beastie Boys of NFTs? Because right after our initial success, it felt like the Beastie Boys going on tour with Madonna. Everyone was like, who the fuck are these kids? The Rolling Stone article then states, funnily enough, Madonna's longtime manager, Guy Oseri, signed on to rep the foursome about a month after Goner made this comment to Rolling Stone. It's just so ironic that Board Ape Yacht Club would go on to partner with Madonna's manager. Guy Oseri. Here is the family tree of Board API Club. Greg Solano and Wiley Arano are from Miami. They met later in life at a bar arguing about literature. Karem Adelaide what a and Zayshan Ali nerdy went argument. to the University of Maryland together. Greg Solano Not even also sports attended or the anything. University of Maryland, but would go on to get his MFA no, Robert at Frost University is the University of Virginia. The P.O. Box of Yuga Labs is in Alexandria, Virginia. The CEO of Yuga Labs, Nicole Munez, went to high school with Wiley. Mark Andreessen is the funding. Guy Oseri is the management and PR, and it's not a far stretch to say that Neil Strauss is their Rolling Stone media connection. He is also writing a book based on Board Ape Yacht Club. Guy Oseri and Neil Strauss go back to 1998, when Guy Oseri was featured in the credits of Neil Strauss
Strauss's biography on Marilyn Manson. One of the most mind-boggling parts to this ongoing story is celebrity endorsement. Everywhere you look, a new celebrity flaunts their hideous Nazi propaganda. I wouldn't expect them to know any better, but there's something going on underneath the surface. I know most celebrities are denser than a cement block, but you can't convince me they would all spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on these JPEGs just because of hype culture. So what's actually going on? In a Twitter Spaces video, Ben Baller, a celebrity jeweler, describes- Hey, for what it's worth, I think this is when Bored Apes died and the reason why NFTs are dying. This was where, or not the reason, this is when it started. You can actually pin it to this tweet right, where is it? Just because of hype culture. So what's actually- what actually it. going on in a twitter spaces video yeah when gwyneth paltrow released her board ape i think this is what instantly killed nfts you can blame gwyneth paltrow for bitcoin plummeting and everything else i think this is what finally signaled the end times thanks to tier one cycling and that boy loy and gore and jeb Ben Baller, a celebrity jeweler, describes the process of receiving a bored ape. Real talk, not once, not twice, three times I've been offered a bored ape through Moon Pay. I had Adidas hit me up, my DMs, you know, you know on Instagram, hey man, you want to call face with us, blah, blah, whatever. Oh, do you own a bored ape? No, I fucking don't. You know, hit me up. And it's just, I don't, I don't know what it was, but the fact that some of these Super top tier all star NBA players had them, and I was like, yo, this is all cap. I mean, and it was this NDA, they kind of send my agent and shit too, you know. I mean, there's definitely NDAs and everything there, but I'm, I'm, I'm you know, positive there's, you know, some. No, no, what I'm saying is for me, to, if, if I was to accept, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Want every, every, not, every, every they wanted you to not know. disclose that you, they want, they wanted you to not disclose that they had purchased the agent. Thanks, you said Melbo. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Wanted to see my yeah, right. yeah, because you which, liked which, it. Which you know what? Which you know what the craziest thing about that is is that a lot of celebrities who are going into this, they're probably just stoked to get the eight, and they don't even realize a lot of them probably don't consult their legal and shit like that beforehand. Yeah. But they're actually asking you to commit fraud on their behalf. That's right. MoonPay has celebrities sign NDAs or non-disclosure agreement contracts revealing how they receive the ape. I just got my first NFT. Oh, you did? What was it? I threw MoonPay. Moon okay. MoonPay, which is, I'm, I'm figuring, I did my homework. Okay. MoonPay was like PayPal, but for crypto. In Jesus fact, Christ. the celebrities aren't even buying them, and they're lying through their teeth about why they bought them, all while committing fraud on MoonPay's behalf. That one's Receiving super true, though. As an endorsement and not That's been an open secret for a minute. Compensated violates the Federal Trade Commission's laws. So next time you see a celebrity show off their bagel. board ape, you can see who's a puppet taking advantage of their audience, all while unknowingly contributing to an apocalyptic political ideology backed by the technocratic elite. You may be asking yourself, who designed these apes in the first place? Surely, they would be the ones responsible for drawing the racist imagery, right? Currently, it is believed that there are six artists on the Yuga Labs team. However, there was an artist in particular that provided the base layers for the apes. Her name was Seneca. When confronted and shown the finished designs, she claimed she did not even recognize the final product and was shocked at the characteristics she saw. Seneca described payment from Yuga Labs as not ideal. After all, they were rolling in millions of dollars and she wasn't even getting a slice of the pie. However, it is speculated that Seneca received a $1 million bonus from the company after media outlets front ran her story. At the end of the day, Seneca, a very talented artist, was not responsible responsible for this imagery. The Board Ape Yacht Club project oh, Seth a Green. sinister commentary on people's oh. eagerness to hop on trends and projects just because it's in the spotlight. I say this is an that ongoing Seth story because on April 30th, 2022, one year after launching Board Ape Yacht Club, Yuga Labs launched a metaverse called Other Side. If the date sounds familiar, it's because it's also Hitler's death day. The sprites available in the video game that doesn't exist yet are called CODAs, spelled with a K. In music, CODA with a C means the end, and obviously the theme of transitioning from life to death or crossing to the other side. 
Their new metaverse also features Stonehall Jackson, a reference to the Confederate leader Stonewall Jackson, and Plot One is owned by Emperor Tomato Ketchup. Along the way, Ryder Rips was able to open the eyes of thousands of people Isn't by organizing the information and explaining the full context to the best of his ability, knowing all too well that the barrier to entry of this information is diving down the deep rabbit holes of white supremacy, the alt-right, and 4chan. But now, one thing's for certain. He was correct in telling me that Board Ape Yacht Club is the biggest troll in internet history. Now that you know everything there is to know about Board Ape Yacht Club's cute little social experiment, what can we do about this? Well, as it stands right now, the founders of Board Ape Yacht Club operate relatively unchecked. That's because there's no real pressure. Their tactic of using plausible deniability and dumb excuses to deflect from the truth is about to change. Nicole Munez, I really hope you had no idea this was going on. And if you didn't, that means your business partners strung you along because they think of you as a normie. It's unfortunate if you got roped link. into this. Guy Oseri, we will not be silenced. That's all I'm going to say. Gordon, Garga, Tomato, and Sass. I also think these guys are pussies. Like, I think they're feckless for doing this. It's like, <laughs> they are, bro. It's like, go fucking do, like, why are you making this girl we went to high school with speak for you on tape? I want every celebrity, actor, athlete, and influencer to burn their fucking ape. I want to make such I'd a have, Well, I mean, they might now because it's not everyone from Steph doing Curry well. To Post Malone to Jimmy Fallon is forced to act. You see, this little price tag is contingent on you, the market, the people. But in their minds, it's the normies, the sheep that made them rich. So I ask you, are you a fucking sheep? <laughs> I want each and every one of you to I think there is zero people watching this that have a board AYC ape. on Twitter. Let's play their game. Burn means to destroy, but it's also something you can do with your NFT if you hold one. Not only will we sink Board Ape Yacht Club because of their disgusting scheme, we will send a message. This message will be loud and clear. We will not be manipulated. To piss off ape profile pictures and amplify his own research, Ryder created Ryder Rips Board Ape Yacht Club. Ryder won a DMCA takedown request against Yuga Labs, solidifying the point that you can't copy an NFT. <laughs> Ryder also set his royalties to 0%. In this case, it's truly not about the money. He is also creating Ape Marketplace, saving people billions of dollars a year in gas fees. Oh, and if you see my profile picture, don't be fooled. It doesn't contain any racist imagery. It's also from the Ryder Rips Board Ape Yacht Club collection. Silly goose, you can't copy an NFT. And I think I'll call him Caesar. You can even use him as your profile picture, because we're about to take over. <laughs> what a wild fucking ride. Oh, a little montage? That was extremely interesting. Yeah, I think I, I think I definitely agree to a certain extent that board apes were started as an elaborate troll. I think the evidence, well, a good portion of the evidence was pretty irrefutable. He's a prime pricey. I don't agree with every point. I think a few of them were kind of reaching, but there were some extremely solid ones that you really can't overlook or write off as a coincidence. That was wild. Thanks, Reset. Kaluminati. 
I think the whole NFT scam is dog shit hype anyway. Well, yeah, NFTs fucking suck. NFTs are trash. There's some good points, but some hard-reaching ones. Yeah, I mean, that's going to always be the case. When you're presenting an argument on something, there's going to be good points and there's going to be bad points. But I think the good points here absolutely outweighed the bad ones. Like, some of them were straight up just irrefutable. Especially when it came to, like, the board ape number 1488 being the... Having a prison jacket, which also had the 1987 date on it, which was when one of the Nazi heroes had died in prison... Like, there's just some things that under no circumstances could possibly be even construed as a coincidence. And the logo. Like, coming right out of the gate, that logo is absolutely not coincidental that it happens to line up with the Nazi one. That was very deliberate. Like, there's just no argument to be made that it just happens to be a coincidence. Are you kidding me? That shit was garbage. I'm disappointed in you. I'm super curious then from your perspective then, Dill, and it, you're fine to disagree. How do you explain some of these as coincidence though? Like we'll just start with some, like the basic one here, the logo. The logo matching one to one on every level with this, which is of course Nazi related. How do you, this is directly to you, Dill. I'd like to hear how you explain this as a coincidence. If you were to say, like brainstorming with your bros, we need a cool logo. How about like a black circle with like a skull on it? And since we're ape themed, why not like a monkey skull on it? Well, why would you then roughen the edges out? What would what would be the point? And then also, why 18 teeth? Do monkeys have 18 teeth? I, that I don't know. But there's just so many things here. Like, I don't know how you can possibly write it off as a coincidence. The 18, deliberate. The roughing the edges, deliberate. The color scheme, all of it matches exactly here. Like, I don't see how that could possibly be a coincidence. Monkeys have 22 teeth. Apes have 32 teeth. 18 isn't racist shit. See, that, but that's absolutely spoken like someone who doesn't actually go on the internet and see things. Because they do have those, like, goofy little, uh, like... It, I don't like using the term dog whistle. It just sounds like a Twitter debate, bro. But it is what it that that is what it is. Like little secret uh, hidden messages between each other, and one of them is like 18, 1488, the 14 words. Like those those are things that actual racists use as like an actual thing. Like it's it's just something that's so hard to write off as a coincidence. It's pretty basic shapes. I've seen it used a lot. Can you, then again to you, Dill, can you present one to me that is the same coloration and the same roughing edges, all of it matching very similar to this in like an innocent project? If you've seen this shape so often. And this is, on, this is like the softest ball one. It gets a lot deeper here in the middle when it came to the official board Abe game. But this one I just think is already a very hard one to defend as coincidence. And it's not just Dill. I see a lot of people saying it's reaching. And again, you're, you're fine to disagree. I just don't see how it could possibly be, possibly be a reach. If this was like a perfect circle, I could absolutely write it off as a coincidence. I really could. But it's not. Like... the. I've seen plenty of logos. I have talked to many graphic designers for, like, companies, businesses, and shit. I've never, ever seen, like, roughing edges on, a like, a circle logo for no reason. And especially not when the colors all match up, the placement all matches up, the 18 teeth, like, like all of these matching up. Like, I've never seen that many coincidences. It's a deliberate copy. It's intentional. It's absolutely a reference. Things they give sub truly.
So, you, okay, you literally just agreed with what I'm saying. Iconography is used again and again. Some edgelord uses it to create the hype, of course. It's all just to create hype and build more money in the project. This is exactly what they intended. What do you think I'm arguing, man? You just said that it... You're, you're agreeing with me, but arguing. <laughs> yes, you, you are agreeing that it's deliberate. Which is the point that I and the video maker, Fillion, are making. That it is deliberately references to Nazi symbolism and, and shit like that. As like, and he proved the connection with some of the creators in 4chan and this shit being used over there. As like a Easter egg for like 4chan shit. Thus, going back to the point of the video, that bored apes were started as a meme and a troll using, like, racist imagery and shit and references like that, just hidden throughout it. It's just the biggest troll in internet history, basically. Getting all the celebrities to buy into something with hidden undertones of racism and shit. And then I'll, I also think this one should have immediately been a red flag to anyone that recognized this name. Emperor Tomato Ketchup being a reference to a movie that was banned for child porn. Emperor Tomato Ketchup's not exactly like a randomly generated name. And if you can easily Google that name and find that movie, or find that album which is a reference to that movie, a sane person would have changed their name. Been like, oh my god, child porn, I'll, I'll pass, I'll change my name to something else. Yeah, but the album is a reference to the movie. So the album that he said he based it on is a reference to the movie. The album is a reference. The album title is a reference. Then that's a pedophilia, not Nazism. Well, that, again, I'm just saying, like, that is just another, like, red flag kind of thing. That has nothing to do with what they put in Bored Apes. That name is just something I think should have been a red flag. Thanks for five gift subs, Bagel. Appreciate it, man. And the bits, Veil. Vale. Very, very interesting piece. Again, I don't agree with all of it. I do think some of it was reaching, especially when it came to, like, their uh, mobile game where the banana bushels looked like uh, swastikas. Disagree there, as well as a couple other points I thought were a bit reaching. But overall, there was a lot of irrefutable points made here. That was super interesting. Fillion absolutely crushed it there. And Ryder rips by extension. You can always see things that are connected if you look hard enough. Again, man, they make you look hard enough. In, 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 literally in an interview, they say it's not random. Uh, let the unutterable be conveyed unutterably. It isn't random. There's meaning behind it in their own interview. And then in their own official scavenger hunt, use some of the most advanced ciphers and fucking uh, cryptology imaginable in order to reference things that have multiple meanings with racist shit. Like, there's just, there's so much to it that you can't overlook as coincidence. I think by far the biggest one, I guess even if you want to write off the logo, which I think is impossible to write off, I think the biggest, like, whoa, is their Board Ape 1488. That one shows an absolutely deliberate reference to an actual Nazi. Board Ape number 1488. 1488 is, again, a racist thing. The 14 words, 88 being a reference to Hitler, 1488 being a known uh, racist dog whistle thing, and then the board ape representing this one having a prison jumpsuit on with 1987 on it, when in 1987 this Nazi hero perished in a prison. It, that's just not a coincidence. Like, that's just not something you can deny. <laughs> I cannot understand why anyone would spend so much time to do shit like this. Then you haven't been on the internet long enough, man. An elaborate troll is like a trophy to some people.
you can't just take the zeros out of the jumpsuit. But yes, you can. In their own game, where you're using similar ciphers, the null padding is a totally reasonable thing to do here. To look a little bit deeper. Because the board ape creators themselves have challenged you to look deeper with their own game as well. They tell you, they want you to look deeper. So they use one of the ciphers that was used in the game, which is the null padding cipher. Like, I don't know, I just, I, I don't know how you can keep writing it off. Thanks for five gift subs unknown. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for the generosity and the resub came. What do you gain from defending Bored Ape? I disagree with people in chat that keep saying, like, Bored Ape deniers must have Bored Apes or whatever. I totally understand, like, a reason, like, approaching this reasonably, there is no possible explanation for why they would do it. But if you have been on the internet, you can absolutely see a reason. Because trolling is so coveted. An elaborate troll is an absolute dubsky. Like, people will commit entire lives online for the sake of a troll. And this is the biggest that I've ever heard of. QAnon still bigger. I would act. I'm a huge fan of the QAnon trolling. I'll just go ahead and say it. I think everything 4chan did the QAnon, making them sit outside in a random street in Dallas for two months waiting for JFK Jr. to be revived and cruise through on a limo. I think that shit is genius. But this troll is significantly bigger than that. This is a billion dollar business that was started potentially from for the sake of a meme and to troll people. This is on a whole different level. Racism isn't a troll. They're using it as a troll. That like they, they are using all the racist imagery and references and undertones throughout the iconography as a way of trolling people that buy into it. They are laughing at the expense of normies that are paying them by representing this awful shit. It's edgy trolling, or at least so this video presents. Ironic racism is still racist. I'm not saying it's not. Wait, what the fuck? You're putting words in my... I'm not saying that. I'm not saying it's not racist. What do you... Stop. Jesus Christ. I'm not saying it's not racist. Holy shit. Why, why are people putting words in my mouth? Oh my God. Good Lord. God damn. I think they were referring to the chat. Oh, okay, maybe. I don't know, it's hard to tell. Thanks for the gift sub Balaki and the resub Balakay. Is that true? I was very curious what the impact this had, because like I said, this was a big this was a big one. I saw this on Twitter quite a bit with people talking about it, I just hadn't seen it. Jimmy Fallon and Steph Curry removed their board eight profile pics since this video came out. Is that true? I have, obviously I don't follow Jimmy Fallon, so let's check there. Because he did have a board ape as his profile pick for the longest time, ever since he came out as a big board ape guy. Okay, so that has changed. Steph Curry, I, I don't know if he ever had a board ape picture, but I'll still check anyway. Okay. What about Eminem? I know Eminem had one for a very long time. So he still does. Curry's has been changed for a little bit. The, a little bit. Is Risa Bridge? So I guess I'd be curious to see how these develop them. The video is only two days old. I don't know what kind of impact it actually made in like the mainstream eye. But it doesn't seem like it's only Fillion that's brought this up. 
like that that girl was interviewed about people talking about the undertone racism in the uh, board ape stuff. So it seems like there's already been a discussion on it, like in the bigger scheme of things. Thanks, the resub clean cut. It was Ryder Rips when he wrote an article about it a month ago. He's the driving force behind this. Yeah, and Fillion gave him all proper credit. I was just curious if the video or anything had made the big wave, the big waves. This was wild. I actually haven't seen a rabbit hole. Well, rabbit hole's probably the wrong word here. <sighs> a subject that elaborate in a long time. That just had so much depth to it. Like, holy shit. It wasn't really an iceberg. It was just more of like an actual extremely deep and elaborate series of puzzles and crazy wild shit. Those ciphers, th bro, this whole cipher section was one of the Jeez. most mind-blowing sections I've ever seen. I, like, th there had to be 30-something ciphers here, I and I'd, ha I'd only heard of maybe five of them. And I, I like learning about ciphers, so I feel like I know a decent, like, number of them. But these, holy shit. This was crazy. And they were all different. Like, a Mad Gab cipher... A fucking mad gab cipher where you have to sound some certain things out as well as piece together certain things that'll sound out an actual answer or clue. Crazy. appreciate it coco and again it's just one of those things where it's just a hard thing to believe like it really just is thanks to the prime you boy what was the other conspiracy you're talking about oh QAnon jfk revival look that up 4chan trolled well i q anon started as a 4chan troll but 4chan went hard on q anon and convinced them that JFK had been revived and would be driving down a certain street in Dallas, I think it was Dallas, in a limousine to announce his presidential run in 2024. And I think he was also going to be with Donald Trump. It was inc it was incredible. They sat there at that street for two months. Two months. I saw them doing candlelight vigils, still holding signs and waiting for JFK Jr. That was amazing. Things of the bits clash. Thank you for the bits bagel. Appreciate it, man. Uh, I'll probably have to pass on that one, Clash. Thanks to the Prime Mason. QAnon ruined people's lives. That is true. That shit tore up families. Just a lot of really gullible, dumb people wanting to feel special and believing in the most absurd nonsense of all time. It's still hurting people? No, I thought QAnon fizzled out. Do they still have, like, strong reps? I don't know. Thanks for Prime Brother. QAnon is anti-pedo. I was actually talking about this with Kaya on the podcast. No matter how insane a conspiracy theory is, they always sprinkle one real fact into it so that way people can always use that as like their ace in the hole. No, 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 you see? They were right about this. 
So with QAnon, the thing they're right about is that there's a lot of Hollywood pedophiles, which there is. Like, that's a fact. That's what a lot of people, a lot of people know that, and it sucks. But that's the only thing they're right about. And they always harp on that fact, like, no, look, we actually got it right. You see, there's Hollywood pedophiles. It just gives, yeah, it just makes it like an easy thing to defend. Is there a duck? What's the biggest troll you've ever pulled off? Care to share? Oh, I've, I've never been good at it. Uh, I guess accidentally I made a couple people on YouTube think like uh, that. I'm not, I've never really tried to troll anyone. Or anything, I just, like, appreciate good ones from a distance, like the QAnon JFK thing. I guess the only time I even came close is when I made that video about how paper is made. But I just played at how it's made in reverse and claimed that trees come from paper. And the joke was on myself because the comments thought I was being serious and didn't know that papers come from trees. So, it was I didn't really troll anyone, I just made myself look fucking dumb. The bloody egg. But that wasn't... I, I didn't do that. Matt did that. Sounds like you were copying Hugbees there. You want to explain yourself? I wasn't. I had actually seen something extremely similar a long time ago. Uh, there was a guy, this is, I don't even know where this video was, it was like 10 years ago, but there was a guy on YouTube who was making a video on, um, how they reprocess Oreos, and I found the idea of that fascinating, like, how do you reprocess an Oreo, and I was watching it just blown away by the information being presented, and then towards the end of it, I realized that he was just playing the video in reverse, and I was like, wow, <laughs> that fucking got me. So then 10 years later, I was like, well, this would be a fun video to do to carry on the spirit of that guy. I'll do it for paper. So if anything, I copied that guy, not Hugbees. There was a video you made where there was a Vimeo link in the chat of someone finger blasting themselves. Why are you going to discredit my art like that and boil it, voice crack, boil it down to such a rudimentary level? What I created there was art. That video was of a porn star named Euphrat fingering herself to the, through the fire and the flames and I sped up the footage so that way it synced up. It was actually really cool. Thanks for resub checks mix. In the prime, Robbie. Like the resub Geikel. What about the whole fake office ghost video you tried to get viral? Yeah, that just didn't work. I, I like to pretend I didn't do that. Thanks to the Prime Owl. Thanks to the resub. Dra Draco? No, no Weed Shop tonight. We played Weed Shop last night. We'll play more later this week. Can't click links, bagel. When is the RLCS LAN? London Major is six days from now, or seven days from now. Moist Esports Rocket League, baby. This is our biggest tournament yet. 
Well, actually, in general, across all of Moist Esports, is going to be our biggest tournament across any game. The London Major, I believe, is a $600,000 prize pool for us. I think. I could be wrong. I don't quite remember. June 29th. We're the two seed. Have I seen any gr grasp of Avarice speedruns? No, I haven't. Is BDS one? Yeah, BDS is the one seed. Best conspiracy to watch. Are you asking for one? Uh, this conspiracy I always recommend now is called the Secret Space Program. So the Secret Space Program I find to be one of the most interesting rabbit holes of all time. <clears throat> Huge shout outs to Oki Weird Stories for this one. This is just one of the most outrageous conspiracies ever. Imagine everything you've ever heard as, like, false, but come to light. Uh, how do I present, how do I present this the right way? Everything that everyone knows is wrong, they believe is right. So, okay, a lot of, the basis of the conspiracy is, these people believe that they are abductees of the secret space program which is a space program that was started by i believe i believe it was started by the nazis and they or no no it was started to fight the nazis in space and they were taken at birth to become galactic warriors and everything is on the table it's a combination of every conspiracy ever so some some of the secret space program believers believe that they're vampires uh they believe that they are shape-shifting werewolves some of them believe that they used to be gladiators who were taken from their time period and brought to space and then re-existed in this time period. It has everything. Absolutely everything. I think it is the most fascinating conspiracy theory out there. Oh, and Kevin Spacey, for some reason, is a, a big component of the secret, secret space program. Exit Prime Dev in the five gift subs, Tomato. Thank you, Tomato. And the bits bagel. What video should I watch about this? Watch Oki's video. Oki has an incredible breakdown of it and even gets like interviewed with the, one of the figureheads of the secret space program movement, goes to their convention and even gets on their channel while pretending to be a believer. It's amazing. It, it's, it is so good. This video is still so criminally underrated. He made such a wonderful breakdown of it. I like how you're fourth on that list. Oh my god, after watching Oki's video, I could do nothing but fucking rant about it. I would- I couldn't believe what I had just learned. <laughs> It blew my fucking mind. Thanks to the bits frozen in the resub margin. Did you see Oda added you to One Piece due to the awful use of your likeness for Bandai's ads? I mentioned this earlier on stream, but I'll do it again just in case. Bandai actually did talk to Matt today, <laughs> like the official Bandai company, to talk to Matt today about that, about me being used in the ads. And it turns out Bandai internally reviewed everything, confirmed everything, that wasn't them. That was a bootleg knockoff of their game that was using my shit and promoting it on Facebook as theirs. So they like ap profusely apologized to Matt for it. They were, apparently they were so nice. 
It was one of like the the head honchos at Bandai was talking to Matt about it. Why to Matt? Because Matt handles all of that for me. I direct everything to Matt. Needs to give some apple and the resub bagel and onion. Have you seen Gravity Falls? No, I've only checked it out, like, occasionally. Like, before falling asleep, when Tiana's just putting shit on to fall asleep to. They should have added you as DLC, NPC, and Elden Ring as an apology. Oh, that would have been so nice. <laughs> Imagine, just strong-arming them for shit. Oh, that was so sweet. Thanks, Jake. Do you still call Matt during your mean shits? No, he usually calls me when I'm peeing. I, I, contrary to what he'll claim, I don't call him when I'm going to the bathroom. He always calls me in the middle of me going to the bathroom. And what am I going to do, just not answer? I've already watched that whole Kimba video. I find Kimba to be a really interesting story as well. I'm sure most people already know that one. Kimba, Simba, the stuff like that. Where it's claimed Lion King was a ripoff of a, a older Japanese property named Kimba. Your movie sucks has an excellent video on it. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm talking about. I've already seen the video. It is a great video breakdown on it. And he does prove it wrong. It's the resub bacon. <laughs> 